I'm Carl Anthony, Managing Editor of AutoVision News, and this is AutoSense Insights. We're speaking today with Rafi Horel, who is the founder and CEO of Opsys. And Rafi, welcome to the program, and, and so good of you to take time to join us today. Hi, Carl, and thank you for uh, having me with you. <laughs> so Rafi, tell us a little bit about Opsys. Give us an overview of the company. So uh, Opsys is a little, I would say, unique startup uh, company because uh, it was actually established from a team uh, that uh, uh, came all together out of a, a U.S. corporate called the Finisar Corporation that was uh, from the fiber optics communication industry. And the team is a generic team used to work for many years, 10 years, from, from the low level technician up to the top uh, which is, the, I mean, myself and our chairman of the board, which used to be the CEO for, for Fenisar. So we, we used like to work very tight in a good, a very, uh, I would say, commando unit. And, um, and that gave us a lot of uh, benefit of understanding things that I think people who came into this, uh, these uh, industries are, are less familiar with. Uh, and that's very helpful. And we'll talk about this, about the LIDAR and how this comes together with, with our experience. And absolutely. So, so that, that is a very good transition to my next question. You just recently demonstrated a first true solid state LIDAR, and it has a 90 degree field of view. So tell us a little bit about that, Rafi. Yeah, actually, that was a very exciting. We also shared this in the different links in the media, and, and we got the YouTube uh, link that uh, uh, was showing this. And the, the nice thing here is that uh, we get a strong feedback of a very dense point cloud. This is a system, it's a true solid state system. And we say true, usually people are, are getting confused with the solid state and yes, it's not liquid. No, we are talking about zero parts that are moving in the system and it's a static system. And that allows us to get many benefits. Obviously the first one is the reliability, which there's no, nothing moving there, no mechanical, no mirrors that may be suffering from shocks, vibrations. That stuff is gone. It's all like a semiconductor, or you can envision like a, a, a camera, basically, that is built in very simple way. Nothing needs to be tweaked due to different locations and movements. And that's a, a very uh, important starting point. So the point cloud that we are able to show uh, in that demo uh, was a 90 degrees, uh, field of view, horizontal field of view, and almost 2 million points per second were shown in this. Uh, and, and, and in the video, you can see that it's a really, it's a raw data. Some people may be confused and think, oh, maybe it's like a slam or maybe it's some kind of uh, image processing down there. No, this is a true time of flight measurements that are presented in a, in a display. And I don't need to add any camera in, in, in next to it that you will be able to envision what's going on in the scene. So this is uh, something very strong. Uh, and, and I think uh, people that are understanding perception uh, uh, are being able to value this, uh, this quality, high quality of point cloud. So Rafi, this leads me to a number of important questions here. So let's, let's take them one at a time, but let's start at, at the beginning. This idea of no moving parts of a solid state LIDAR, why is that critical? Why is that important? So, so you know, when we, we, we started to, uh, to look at LiDAR and, and, and one of the reasons why we go into this, while even in 2016, 17, there still has been many companies there doing or claiming to do LiDARs. And, and uh, we tried to think, okay, it should be something that goes to high volume industry. Uh, so it should be very simple to manufacture then obviously performance is essential. You have to meet at least the current promise that people need. And then out of all these, it should be also um, uh, very reliable. Automotive grade is, is very, very challenging for this technology, especially the optics. So we brought into our concept a lot of experience from different uh, 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 applications we used to handle with mill, mill stuff, mill standards optics, where you need harsh environment, uh, very uh, keen there. Then looking at the high volume manufacturing, you need the very 
uh, easy to calibrate, easy to test system. And then when you look at the ingredients, what's left is the material. The material in our system, it's all wafer scale uh, components. So it's like silicon. So then if you get these together, manufacturability, testing, and, and uh, reliability, I think you get, uh, I would say, the best chance to achieve what the industry really needs. Of course. So let that, and that again, just, it leads me down this list of just very important questions that, 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 that I have. And I think other AutoSense viewers will, will have as well. So talking about the importance of, of, of no moving parts, but then tell us, Rafi, about the OPSIS approach. So there's LIDAR in general and, and all of the solutions that that can bring to the market. But what is unique about the OPSIS approach to LIDAR that is beneficial for your customers? So, you know, when you look at LIDAR, you have a source, you have a detector, and let's assume that under eye safety, everybody can get the best detector and the best uh, source, highest power. So then it comes down to, okay, the system. And our approach, as you, when you look at other, other uh, solutions, on one hand, we, uh, we are scanning. Why it's important to have a scanning LiDAR and, and not the flash as opposed to flash? Because of the eye safety. You need to pour as much energy as possible, but be able to very focus it on a spot so you can get highest power density. That's the key, power density. Then you can get as much energy back as you can. Then if you look at the scanning LiDARs, now you're looking at systems that suffer from slow refresh rates. They need to move. Mm -hmm. in, a, in a static system where nothing is moving and the scanning is literally what we do, we are using a 2D array Vixel. Vixel lasers are very low cost. So what we do is that we are actually literally switching on and off many, many lasers very fast. By doing that, we are able to scan the scene many, many times. I would say it's close to 1000 frames per second. Now this is a huge number and nobody really is able to do so something with such, such amount of data. And what we do, we actually do some signal processing on that rate, on this raw data, and eventually provide a 3D point cloud, which is driven by multiple measurement per point. So when you look at, at the overall, you have a source. So let's say everybody will have that source, then detector, but then the system. And here is the key. When you're able to do this very fast and your system is not moving, so basically, it's a quasi-static scene. You are able to average, even just simple averaging will improve the signal to noise and hence you get more range as opposed to any other solution which may be based on one, two uh, measurements per point. A and the key here, what you could see also in the movie, that our performance is the same across all the field of view. We are not playing games with ROI, uh, that you need to narrow this in order to meet the frame rate or you need to go to a lower resolution in order to meet the frame rate. No, everything across the full field of view is 30 frames per second. It's 1.1 by 0.1 angular resolution, high resolution and fast. So then I think what we call, there's no specmanship. That's, this is what you get. Right. You know, Ravi, in the presentation that you've given us today and the video and the slides, it, it's helpful to see a, a picture of this. It's helpful to get a, a picture of your technology in real time. And I guess one of the other questions, you know, talking about solid state, no moving parts, the benefits, why is it that people still invest in moving parts based technology? Why is it that people still continue to look to mechanical LIDAR when the solid state approach is, is, is more beneficial? So, so I think, I think that, uh, First of all, you know, looking at autonomous driving application. Um, and I heard this from people, from customers. They say, first, I need to, to prove that this autonomous driving is working. The software, the, all this package, and leave aside the sensors. They always say, you know, the sensor will get there. They will be good. So eventually, the people are now in troubles of getting this working and get the mileage and all these things. And they less care about whether I need to replace my LiDAR every year or every six months because it's, it's, it's uh, basically it's not going to hold for longer all the time running and, and spinning. So and, and that's one thing. They are, they are paying for it, thousands of dollars. 
I think it proves that this is not for real deployment. And yes, maybe initial deployment, maybe it's good to say I have a LiDAR in my system because LiDAR is essential. We can talk about it as a different aspect, why LiDAR in general, but those are that using now those mechanical, at least we are able to get the feedback and strong feedback that it's a temporary solution until they will have the ultimate solid state, true solid state system that can really be reliable, automotive grade, all the all these things that they need in their in the car to be to to meet in the car. Right. Now, Rafi, we touched on this a little bit at the beginning, but you reminded me when you said automotive grade and, and the high quality standards that come with automotive LiDAR. Let's talk about that for just a little bit. So why is it that the standards for LiDAR, why is why are those standards so high for the automotive market? Why is reliability important? Well, you know, it's the first thing that comes when you think about automotive is 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 the safety. And it's you no, know, it's it's people's lives, and uh, uh, especially even you talk about ADAS, which is supposed to just help the driver, not sure. fully autonomous. You sure. still sure. need reliable system to count on. And I think, um, you know, if if we look at uh, the the future of, of all this uh, technology, if it will be the same as people driving, it's not good enough. It's not justifying go to that direction if it's only going to be the same as just a person driving. You need to be better. You need to make sure the technology will bring you to a better situation from, from accidents, from all these kind of surroundings. So it, it's really important that those systems are reliable and available when you need them. And, and, and that's, that's reliability, that's high quality um, uh, that, that comes into this game. Of course. So Rafi, let's say that I'm one of our viewers, I'm, I'm watching this and I really enjoy everything that you're saying and I'm interested in learning more. How do our viewers go about getting in contact with Opsys? So Opsys, you know, we talked a little bit uh, before that about the company. So we are coming from the culture of uh, execution and bringing a product. And until now we were less talking. Actually, this is my first interview and uh, um, you know that, that it's it's a it's a great opportunity to mention yes. that we are actually now starting a, a roadshow with our prototype. It's not yet the final system, but we felt comfortable now that we can bring in and and show people a real product. I think people are burnt in this industry from getting a lot of nice slides and and things that are not working, even after they invested a huge amount of money and that keep on going and on going. So you cannot just talk, you need to prove. And, and, and now we are starting this. So we have our sales channel. We are now having people in Europe, in the US, um, and uh, also very strongly uh, pursuing the, the Chinese market. Um, so uh, we uh, are now actually ready, ready to go basically. That is amazing. And we are so happy uh, to be your first interview. Um, do you have, uh, as given that it is your first interview, do you, did we miss anything? Uh, is there anything you would like to add or like to summarize again for our viewers? Well, yeah, as I think the, the main, for me, uh, the main message is that, uh, uh, you know, this technology is evolving. Yes, there are many challenges still to come and, and bring it into full deployment in the in, in cars and, and it's a very demanding industry. Uh, also from pricing point of view, by the way, cost is critical here. And I think that's one of the blocks for the deployments of LiDAR. So I think all in all, I, we have the ingredients, you know, today I would say we're not manufacturing, it's in high volume now. So I can say, hey, take it and it's gonna cost you hundred or two hundred dollars, no. And we are not saying things that we cannot stand behind. But we can prove everyone that this is the right composition of technology, of components, and a system that can bring this all together to fit into uh, uh, the, this, this in the demand in this industry. Well, Rafi, from all of us here at AutoSense, uh, we're, we're honored to be your first interview and, and to help you get the word and the message out there about Opsys. Uh, from all of us again here at AutoSense, we want to wish you good luck going forward and, and thank you for your time today. Thank you and uh, good health for everyone.
speaking today with Rafi Harrell. He is the founder and CEO of Opsys. For more great content from AutoSense, visit our hub or our YouTube channel. Just search AutoSense. Thank you.